Hi. Now we're going to start factoring. There are three types of basic factoring. One is called greatest common factor. The second is called difference of two squares. Third is called factoring trinomials. So now, this video, we're going to start with greatest common factor. You already know distributive property. So if I have this, 5 times x minus 3, by distributive property, I'm going to get 5x minus 15. Factoring is going backwards. We start with the answer, and the question is, I want to know two quantities that multiply together that give me 5x minus 15. It's just like if I said to you, 2 times 3 is 6. If I said to you, give me two factors of 6, it's going backwards. What I'm asking for is two numbers that multiply together to give me 6. You could have 1 and 6, you could have 2 and 3. If I said to you, give me two factors of 20, you have a lot of choice. You could say 1 and 20, you could say 2 and 10, you could say 4 and 5. So, that's what we're doing, it's just a little harder with algebra. I'm starting with 5x minus 15, and my question is, I want two factors that multiply together that give me 5x minus 15. So, I know the first type is greatest common factor. I'm looking for a number or a letter or a combination that will divide evenly into both terms. So, greatest common factor is the opposite of distributive property. I'm having something on the outside, a monomial, and then I'll be left with my insides. I start with numbers, then I do letters. Is there a number that will divide evenly? into each term, 5. So I can factor out a 5. I do think about my x. Is there an x in both terms? No. So I cannot factor out an x. So I can factor out my 5. Whatever this greatest common factor is, I take it, I divide it into each term. So now I divide my 5 here, I divide it here. So now, my 5 is canceled, I'm left with x. 5 into 15 only it's negative 15, unlike signs, gives me 3. I can always check my distributive property. If I multiply and use distributive property, I will get 5x minus 15. Let's say I have another one. Let's say I have 8x squared plus 12x. And I'm looking for the greatest common factor. I start with my numbers, then my letters. It's easier, I think, to get the greatest common factor if you start with the numbers staring at you first. Is there a number that will divide evenly into 8 and 12? Well, 8 is too big, it doesn't go into 12, and 12 is way too big, it doesn't go into 8. So I come down. So give me a number that will divide evenly into 8 and 12. 4. So I'm going to have a 4. Can't forget to check my letters. Is there a letter in each term? The same letter? Yes. So I can factor out an x. Now, the hard part. Because it's called greatest common factor, I want to take the most x's I can out of each term x squared means there's two x's here. Here's one x. So just picture like a bowl of M&M's. I've got two M&M's here, one M&M here. I want to take out the most I can out of each bowl. I would love to take two out of each, but I can't because two does not exist here. So the most I could take out in this case is just one x. Four x is my greatest common factor. To get my insides, I take my 4x, I divide it into each term. So again, I have 8x squared plus 12x. 
I'm going to take 4x, divide it into each term. 4 into 8 is 2, x into x squared is x. This term, 4 into 12 is 3, my x is canceled to 1. That's my answer. I can always check by distributive property. I get 8x squared plus 12x. All right, let's try another one. Let's say I have 12x cubed minus 15x squared. I'm looking for a number that will divide evenly into both terms. Well, 12 is too big. I got to come down. So if you look, hopefully you're going to see 3. 3 will go into both. I'm going to factor out a 3. I look at my letters. x cubed means I've got 3x's here. x squared means I've got 2x's here. What is the most x's I can take out of each term? Love to take 3 out, but 3 don't exist here. I can take 2 out of each term. So I'm going to factor out the x squared. That's the hard part. No matter how big this greatest common factor is, I take it, I divide it into each term to get the inside. So I have 12x cubed minus 15x squared. Divide this by 3x squared, this by 3x squared. 3 into 12 is 4. Subtract exponents, I get x. I'm over here. Unlike signs, I get negative 5. My x squareds cancel. My answer is 3x squared, parenthesis 4x minus 5. Uh, we'll do one more, the biggest one. If I have one like this, let's see, 6a squared b. plus 9ab squared plus 3ab. I'm looking for the greatest common factor. So I've got 6, 9, and 3. I can factor out a 3. I have to check every letter. Is there an A in every single term? Yes. So I can factor out an A. Now because it's called greatest common factor, I have to take out the most. There's two here, one here, one here. So the most A's I could take out is one. I check my B's. Is there a B in every single term? Yes. I have one B here, two B's here, and one B here. The most I could factor out is 3AB. To get my inside, I take 3AB. I divide it into each term. 3 and the 6 is 2. Subtract exponents. My b's cancel to 1. I get a 3. My a's cancel. I'm left with a b. 3ab plus 3a into 3ab, they completely cancel out. But remember, in division, they cancel to 1, not 0. I have one more example. Here we go. 6 a b plus 9 a b squared minus 15 a squared. I'm looking for my greatest common factor. I look at 6. 6 is too big. Doesn't work. Got to come down. It's going to be a 3. I go letter by letter. Can I factor out an a? Is there an A in every single term? Yes. I check my exponents. Can I take A squared or two A's out of every single term? No. There's only one here and one here. I check my B's. Is there a B in every single term? No. So I cannot factor out a B. 3A is my greatest common factor. I divide it into each term. 3 and the 6 is 2. My A's cancel. I'm left with a B. 3 into 9 is 3. My A's cancel. 
I'm left with b squared. I get minus 5 a into a squared is a. That's it. Good luck with your homework.